Okay, so Stability AI has released their first lot of language models in what they're calling the Stable LM suite. And they put it on a blog post. We've kind of known that these were coming for a while. There's been talk on Twitter about them. The founder of Stability AI had mentioned that they're training a, a bunch of models. But finally, we've got a blog post with info about them. And we've also got some of the models to play with. And there's some really interesting things in here. One of the key things that I'm going to show you in this video is that they've released this 3 billion model. So most of the models that we've been looking at have sort of started at seven, had something at sort of 13, 14, and then gone 30, 65. Here, what they're doing, it looks like, is they're starting at 3 billion. They have a 7 billion parameter model. Then they're up to around about 15 and then going up to 65 for this. Now, I should stress that the models that they've released so far are not fully trained, which is one of the amazing things about this. So they're calling these the alpha version. And the plan is for these to train on, I think, at least 1.5 trillion tokens of content, if not more. And currently, they've been trained on, I think it's 800 billion tokens. And just to put that in context, the Pythia models are trained on around 300 to 400 billion tokens. And most of the other non-LAMA models, remember LAMA models were trained on a trillion tokens for the smaller ones and 1.4 trillion for the bigger ones. But most of the other models out there, even things like GPT-3 was trained on, on sort of 300 billion tokens. So this is really cool that they're out there and it's just a taster of what's to come when you look at this. So the blog post talks a little bit about their sort of their thinking behind this, that their goal is to open source it. They're releasing base models and they're releasing some fine tunings of those base models. Currently, the one I'm going to show you today is not for commercial purpose, just because it uses some of the data sets for the fine tuning that were not commercially available. This will, I think this will be fixed in the next few days that you'll see versions of these where they're trained just on the Dolly 2 data set or on just open data sets so that you can use these fully. Certainly the base models for all of these, you're able to use them for commercial purposes. On top of the blog post, they've also put out, you can come to their GitHub and you can read a little bit about it. And you can see here is what's actually been released. And we can see that here we've got checkpoints for a base model alpha and then also a tuned alpha. And these have been trained on 800 billion parameters here. They've also put up a Hugging Face demo if you want to try that. I'm going to go through running the small one in Colab so that we can check out the speed of it. And because they've done this in conjunction with a Luther AI, these models are very much geared to work with Hugging Face, to be adaptable to things out of the box. So I think very quickly you'll see 4-bit versions, you'll see you know run on your computer versions, all this kind of stuff in the near future. So let's jump in and have a look at the actual model itself. So this is the 3 billion tuned one. From memory, it's tuned on Alpaca, on ShareGPT, on Dolly, on a few different data sets. Now, of course, the ShareGPT and Alpaca are not available for commercial use. So those ones, that's why this model can't be used for commercial use. But if you were to fine tune the base model, and perhaps we'll do that in a video in the next day or two, if, if people want to see that you would then be able to get results quite easily. And I'm sure people will be fine-tuning them and sticking those up on Hugging Face Hub all over the place. Okay, if we come in and have a look at this, we can see that I'm just using a T4. I'm not using any impressive GPU. And I'm using around about half the T4. So you will be able to run this. So for all of the people who've been asking me questions about, oh, what can I run on my such and such old GPU? There's a good chance that this will run on that. All right, we've set it up. So they've got a system prompt in here. Interestingly, the system prompt, I'm thinking this is because it's the tuned version, has got actually reference to the alpha version in there. Oh, another big thing that I forgot to mention in here is that not only are these being trained on a lot more tokens, the sequence length is a lot longer. So the sequence length of these is 4,096. So I think there's somewhere in perhaps not in here, but the sequence length for these is much longer than even Llama. So these definitely are going to become the sort of main models of choice, at least for the time being. With the red pajama group training models also, it would be interesting to compare those when they finally come out as well. 
but this is really sort of thrown down the gauntlet for everyone to sort of pick it up and run with these. So you can see here, I've basically just set up a little function to use their system. Interestingly, they're using the tokens a similar to a GPT where you've got a system input, then you've got a user and you've got an AI assistant going on here. First off, I've just put in a few of the things that we would normally ask it. So write a note to some Altman saying that they should open source GPT-4. Now it's definitely not as good as like the Koala 13 billion or something like that, right? We're definitely not getting things uh, up there, but this is a tiny model compared to that. It wasn't that long ago that you would be kind of amazed if this kind of model could be influenced, could actually stay on track like you want it here. So anyway, it writes an email. It doesn't talk too much about open sourcing. It doesn't seem to really have the concept of open source in it, but it does say Sam Altman wanted to take a moment to thank you for your work on the insert project name. Your expertise in language generation, text to text technology has been invaluable to us. It's, it's good text that it's generating out. And don't forget, this is only sort of alpha version. We would expect this to improve with the next release that they have of this. Trying to get it to write stories. Again, it's definitely on track of understanding the concept of writing a story and stuff like that. So I asked it to basically write a story about a koala who could beat all the camel lids at pool. It's kind of called the koala camel, which I'm not sure that that's not ideal. And then it really hasn't got the concept of playing pool. It's more in a swimming pool in this case. The really short one that we always test is what is the capital of England? Yes, gets that fine. No problem at all. And then sort of the traditional ones, what are the difference between llamas, alpacas, and vicuñas? Again, it's probably not, the quality of it is not going to be as good as the bigger models, but it, it's definitely coherent. It's doing what we're asking for it to do, those kind of things. And then finally, when I ask it, okay, are you a fan of The Simpsons? Tell me a bit about Homer. If you remember that I asked this one to see, is it going to say, no, I am an AI model. I don't have preferences. So nicely, it says, of course, I'm a fan of the show. I'm always eager to learn more about the visionary writers who create the show. I'm particularly fond of the writing style and humor of Mr. Burns, the beloved voice of Springfield. Anyway, Homer Simpson is indeed a very special individual. So it's got the concept of these two things where one, I'm asking it about, are you a fan of the show? Second one, tell us a bit about Homer. So remember these models are not going to have as many facts in them and they're not going to be as accurate on the facts just because they're so small. What will be interesting is using some of these models with things like Langchain to call out, to search or other things like that, where it's getting the facts externally and just using this model for your language, for your grammar, for your phrasing, those kind of things. So I put this notebook. Another one that I've also put in here is the exact same notebook, but loading it in 8-bit. And you can see when we load it in 8-bit, we're using even less RAM here. We're maybe not getting as huge a win as we do with some of the other ones, but it's still going quite well. We can also see just here, I put the measuring the time of these things. We can see that it's generating text very quickly, 20 seconds of response for this. Whereas, you know, and this is on the small GPU, right? So I'm normally when you see me doing the timings, I'm using an A100, which is much faster, bigger GPU. Here you can see these are very quick. What's the capital of London one? It's answering that in under a second, it looks of it. So that's really good to see. The Vakunas. The comparison one, again, around 20 seconds and the Simpson one, 15 seconds. So this is definitely a model that you're going to be able to use locally and to run on your computer, to run for a variety of different things. Really going to be interesting to see once they've finished training this to the 1.5 trillion, or there was even talk of maybe a 3 trillion parameter version, how much better is that going to get? And then once it's sort of fine tuned for things like Langchain and using external data sources, how much is that going to get? Because this is definitely now in the realm of what we kind of want for something to put it into production. Anyway, have a play with it. This is a quick one. I will do an up, another video coming up of the 7 billion one. We'll look at that more in depth and maybe look at the untuned version versus the tuned version as well in that. As always, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found this useful, please click like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.